Welcome to Europe PCR 2023. My name is Felix Mafut, and I'm pleased to be here with uh, Professor Michel Azizi, uh, who is a hypertension expert out of Paris. Hi, Michel. Hello, Felix. Uh, I'm also very happy to be here. The topic of our discussion is patient selection for renal denervation. We have seen all the clinical trials now being positive, indicating that indeed there is superiority of this procedure against an invasive placebo, against a sham procedure. And now the question comes, when should we use it? In whom should we use it? And when will it be adopted in clinical practice? And I would love to share some thoughts with you here. So um, we have this great opportunity that we just published together and uh, the other members of the community, the new consensus guidelines very recently. We know that uh, denervation reduces blood pressure in the whole range of patients with hypertension. However, the, there is a problem of feasibility if we go to the old population. With whole range, you mean? From the mild to moderate hypertension to very severe resistant hypertension. So the whole spectrum of hypertension is covered by renal denervation. So there is a selection to do, and this is what guided us is uh, to say, okay, we are going to focus first to the most severe form, that is patients with proven resistant hypertension with office blood pressure above 140 over 90 meters of mercury, despite three antihypertensive drugs confirmed by ABPM, and with a GFR above 40 mils per minute and eligible renal anatomy. There are some subset of uh, 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 abnormalities which should not be included. Michel, how many of your patients fulfill these criteria that you see every day, every morning? So uh, we, we see in our clinic 20% of patients re refer to us for specifically resistant hypertension. About 20, depending on the catheter use, about 20 to 30% of them cannot be included because of these problems of anatomy or GFR too low or single kidney or fibromuscular dysplasia, something which does not allow to do this. But still a broad population. Yes, a, a very broad population. And when it comes to patient selection, probably you can tell us a little on how, and how you approach patients and who is in your mind an ideal candidate for renal denervation? Well, Again, the most severe form of hypertension. Uh, we have to discuss with the patients, and also the patient ha have to be to have a preference to this approach, uh, uh, because the uh, the other way to do the thing is just to put um, add medication and medications and medications, which increases the risk of uh, side effects and non-adherence to treatment. So we have to discuss with the patient to explain them the low risk of the procedure, but that's true. Still, it's an invasive procedure. We explain them. We explain the possible benefit, either to have normalized blood pressure with medication or reduction of uh, sufficient reduction by two digits of their blood pressure uh, with this, uh, uh, this approach. In the consensus statement, there's also a section about a difficult patient cohort that we also see in clinical practice, and these are patients who do, who do not tolerate antihypertensive agents. And you mentioned that in the clinical studies, we also included patients without any antihypertensive medication. So when would you probably offer to a patient a renal denervation procedure when he or she is not able or, or unwilling to take and adhere to lifelong that, antihypertensive therapy. That's correct. Since we have the evidence that with no medication it lowers blood pressure, we have today to offer this possibility to this patient because up to now we had nothing to offer to them. Just only discussing, yes, accept your side effects or you have to, you have to absolutely take your medication. We have the opportunity now to help them differently. Again, with a shared decision with patient by explaining clearly what are the benefit and the risk. And also uh, having a multidisciplinary discussion with hypertension specialists, with interventional cardiologists, interventional radiologists to know what is the best approach for this for the patient. The multidisciplinary team approach. Yes, right? absolutely. Yeah. Michel, uh, last question. The trials are completed. There isn't much more to come besides registries that are, you know, including the patients now. What is your expectation? When will this be in clinical practice? When will we see it being adopted? I think the first 
message we have to transmit to our colleagues is, yes, we have proven by multiple trials that this procedure lowers blood pressure. Stop thinking it doesn't work. It's, a, it's an important message. So even- Check the box. Check the box, <laughs> absolutely. So now be convinced you can clearly speak to your patient because we need also adoption by our colleagues, by the whole uh, physicians of the technology. Then there is a problem in terms of reimbursement, which is not my specific topic. <laughs> I don't know if it's your specific Me neither. topic. Yeah. That's, that's, that's another issue. Yeah. However, we should be all convinced because this will also help the adoption by the health authorities. If no one is convinced, it will not be feasible. Michel, thank you very much. That was a great discussion. And um, we see the denovation lowers blood pressure. We have proven it in clinical trials and now it's on us to use it yes. and get patients referred for renal denovation procedures. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Felix.